The end of uh, multiplication is multiplication will always invo involve catalyzing new wineskins. There's going to have to be the death of the old and then the creation, the catalyzation of the new, the new wineskin. And so it is that Jesus in Luke chapter 5, verses 36 to 39, put it this way. He told them a parable. No one tears a patch from a new garment and sews it on the old one. If he does, he will have torn the old, the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. And when one pours new wine into old wineskins, if he does, the new wine will, birth the, will burst the skins. and The wine will run out, and the wineskin will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. And then he says something very interesting. And no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for he says the old is better. This parable is a contrast in its original meaning between the old covenant with Moses and the new covenant with Jesus. And Jesus and the church could not be poured into the old wineskin of Judaism. There had to be a new wineskin, the church of Jesus Christ. And the Judaizers tried to put that new wine in the old wineskin, and the early church understood, no, you can't do that. There's got to be new wineskins. There have to be new churches for the new wine of the gospel going out over all the earth. And so it is that in Europe there are some beautiful cathedrals. And when they were built, they were new wineskins. They were built by motivated Christians who wanted to build a beautiful building. I hope usually because they wanted to be a follower of Christ and express their gratitude to him. But then over time, what happened? Well those buildings began to empty. And there were still some that loved that old wine. But the fact is, in every age, there have to be new churches. In every country, there have to be new wineskins. In every age, there have to be new ministries in order to, that the, that the new wine of the gospel and the new things that God is doing can have room to grow and multiply. We can't just shove it all back in the old forms. That'll kill multiplication. And so the end of multiplication is the catalyzation of new wineskins. I've been using a word here, catalyst, which is a very important word. And I read a book a few years ago that really highlighted this to me. And the name of the book was The Starfish and the Spider. And this book developed the idea that organizations sometimes are like spiders and sometimes they're like starfish. And the contrast between these two was that a spider you know, has a head and those tentacles. And if you want to kill a spider, you strike it on the head and it's dead. But a starfish is different. There is no head to destroy. You can cut off part of a starfish, but the amazing thing is that it still lives because it's not from the head down and hierarchical, but it's much more horizontal in the way that it lives. And this book develops that 
There's a time for old wineskins. There's a time for spider organizations, like an army has a head or a government has a president. And then there's a hierarchy and there's all kinds of layers. And the danger is that the leader will be killed and it will maybe not destroy, but it will damage the whole organization. There's also the need for more horizontal organizations, new wineskins, new approaches. And so this contrast can be seen in the contrast between a CEO, which is a common term for the leader of an organization, a business, the chief executive officer. And then we can contrast this with the catalyst. And so, while both are leaders, catalysts and CEOs are very different. A CEO is a boss. He's in charge. He occupies the top of the hierarchy. A catalyst interacts with people as a peer. He comes across as your friend. Because CEOs are on the top of the pyramid, they lead by command and control. Catalysts, on the other hand, depend on trust. CEOs must be rational. Their job is to create value. Catalysts depend on emotional intelligence. Their job is to create personal relationships. CEOs are powerful and directive. They're at the helm. Catalysts are inspirational and collaborative. They talk about ideology and urge people to work together to make it a reality. Having power puts CEOs in the limelight. Catalysts avoid the attention and work behind the scenes. CEOs create order and structure. Catalysts thrive on ambiguity and apparent chaos. Very, very different approaches. Now, this is not to say that CEOs and organizations that are shaped like that are bad. That's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is that New wineskins go hand in hand with more catalytic leaders. Where old wineskins, the old way of doing it, often looks more like the CEO. And what happens is that as new organizations are formed, they have to bring on some of these organi organizational aspects. There does have to be authority. There does have to be unity. There do does have to be quality control, even in the new wineskin, or else it will just explode and fragment and dissipate. And so one of the ways I like to think about it, a catalyst is that if you take nitrogen and hydrogen and you pour them together into a, into a bottle, Nothing happens. Liquid nitrogen, liquid hydrogen, put them in a bottle, nothing happens. But if you put a little piece of iron in there, the iron is a catalyst that creates something new. It creates ammonia. And in order for there to be new wineskins, there must be catalytic leadership. They go hand in hand. Another way to think about this is that if you put a lot of people in a room, they'll just kind of talk and interact and talk about different things that they might be interested in. But if you put someone in there to catalyze the discussion, to go in a new direction with a goal, then everything changes. And one of the things that's true of a catalyst, though, is that a catalyst does not adhere to the chemical reaction. In other words, when you put hydrogen and nitrogen together and a piece of iron in, it creates something new, but the piece of iron never goes with that new ammonia. It was only a catalyst. And so that's one of the interesting roles of being a catalyst is that you don't always join the new reaction. 
You don't always join the new wineskin. You don't always join the new ministry. And so if I'm going to catalyze a new ministry in our church, that doesn't mean I have to necessarily join the ministry. If I'm going to catalyze a new Bible study, it doesn't mean necessarily I have to be in the Bible study. If I'm going to catalyze some kind of a, any new wineskin, I don't have to always be involved in every new wineskin personally. And if I take on that burden, then I'll stop being a catalyst. And so in my job as a superintendent of churches, I'm a catalyst. I go into churches that need a new pastor, and I catalyze them in a healthy process of finding a new pastor. When we have a healthy church that wants to plant a new church, I catalyze them, giving them ideas and directions so that they can plant a new church, but I don't go with that new church. Because that's not the only role. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.